Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a soft, cushiony blanket of fantasy news to kick off 2024 with. But before we get into that, just real quick, we've brought back the 10 most popular designs from the merch drop over the last year for a limited time. So if you're interested in anything like the disheveled goblin hoodie, it'll be available until the 9th of January, just because we had so many people saying like, hey, I couldn't grab one then, but I'd love to get one now. So they're back for a little over a week. Enjoy. And now, on to the book cover reveal news. Because just announced we had the cover for Road to Ruin by Hannah Lee. Coming May 14th of 2024 and published by Saga Press. Really what I like about this cover is it seems to be boldly pulling from Hyperion Mad Max, not only with the composition, but the actual art style. And while that aesthetic has largely gone out of style, but is not gone, I'm just enjoying seeing it here and I think it's a great execution of it. This looks dope. As I said, Mad Max Hyperion vibes together that kicks ass. And then we also had the cover drop for Mark Lawrence's The Book That Broke the World, the follow-up to the book that wouldn't burn, with cover art by Tom Roberts, who you probably recognize here recently on the channel, featured in the Fantasy Awards for 2023. This artist is certainly making waves, and I actually do really want to read The Book That Wouldn't Burn, the, pre the predecessor to this book, because I've heard many Mark Lawrence fans say maybe it's his best work yet, so on the TBR. From Solaris books, we also got the rather enticing cover for Yu Han Lee's Moonstorm, set to be released June of 2024, a tale of empire, mecha robots, survival, and family, with cover design by Martin Stiff. It took a moment for my brain to exactly recognize what this cover is, which might not be the best sign, but once it did, I really dug it. Something about having this gargantuan spaceship over a computer graphic layout readout of what looks like mountains, maybe? Something about that succeeds at establishing a sense of scope and mystery in a way that I found to be very successful. And then for my V.E. Schwab fans, we had it announced that she is going to be doing a special edition of her wildly successful fantasy series, The Shades of of magic in collaboration with my publisher, Wraithmark Creative, which will be launching January 9th. And in the last book cover we're gonna be talking about today, we had an exciting Folio announcement where they are going to be releasing their special edition of The Long Way to a small, Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Now, important to note, this is gonna be one of their limited runs of only 750 numbered copies. If you're a big fan and excited for this, they'll be going live January 25th, so make sure to get your spot in line. And then, my God, the last piece of like special edition or book news physical release altogether comes from Christopher Paulini, who in a brief Twitter interaction confirmed, a brief Twitter interaction confirmed. Do you overcome the dyslexia? We'll be starting work for the illustrated edition of Eldest in 2024. Not sure when Random House will want it to come out though. It still makes me happy seeing this little mini renaissance of Palini we're having in the last couple of years. I hope it's helping his work manage to spread to future generations as well and moving beyond just the pillar of success he was among millennials. Like it was insane. <laughs> how prevalent the inheritance cycle was for a while. Now, transitioning into weird, I'm not sure how many people are gonna care about this piece of fantasy news that I have a surprising amount of thoughts on. Lego has confirmed that they are going to be putting out a Cullen house from Twilight set. And I'm not even gonna meme on this. I think it's a genius business move. We all know that Lego has kind of transcended beyond just being the toy for kids. So many adults will build sets just because it helps them relax, calm down. It's something fun to do with your hands while you got the TV on in the background. That's aided by the fact that these sets have gotten so expensive over the years, they're kind of becoming like the apple of toys. They're considered like a premium toy. So these sets that are clearly trying to capture on millennial nostalgia wrapped up in a Lego aesthetic is just so smart in my opinion and I wouldn't be surprised if not only does this Cullen set sell a lot, but we see more sets from them pulling from various franchises outside of the ones we already associate them with, like Star Wars, Harry Potter, obviously, to continue to ensnare what has got to be a large bag of millennials who have a little bit of extra money who are willing to buy a set every couple of months. Can't believe I forgot to mention this part of the story. The reason this set is getting made, it was actually one of two finalists in a competition among fans where people submitted ideas, people 
people voted in this and a botanical garden set were the winners. I think it also goes to show the strength of LEGO at this point, where a franchise like this can win a competition and you just know they'll be able to turn around and get permission from that franchise because working with LEGO is something that most franchises like kind of dream of. I imagine it's in the same category as like, oh, you know, getting your character from a video game featured in Smash Bros is a gargantuan achievement. Same thing here, I imagine for LEGO and just like franchise as a whole. Cool, I know there's gonna be more Lord of the Rings sets in the future. And while I didn't love the Rivendell one, I am waiting on a retake of the Helm's Deep. They did a Helm's Deep one a long time ago, but they gotta do another one. They've done like what, 30 Millennium Falcons, Death Stars and Star Destroyers. Give me another siege. I don't want a ship, I want a siege. Next news. Now, it has been announced that an X-Files reboot is in the works. And I don't often do this, I don't wanna do it too much, but here's my just raw reaction to finding this news on Twitch. Cause I think I said my piece here and I don't think I can say it better than I did. X-Files returning to our screens with, oh, fuck. I don't know how many of you have seen the X-Files. I know my audience is a little bit like older than me. So I assume a higher percentage of you uh, than is like typical of my age range have seen it because it's one of those shows that, you know, less popular now than it was. X-Files was cutting edge televised science fiction in its time. And it really pushed the boundaries of what you could put at on TV then. And it still holds up. Like there's classic episodes of the X-Files, but what it was to its core is no longer boundary pushing at all, right? Nothing, the X-Files, like if you aired the X-Files today, it would be mediocre science fiction that did not stand out from the crowd, except for a few episodes that were really, really great. And because of that, a reboot that's just trying to go backwards artistically to try and recapture a moment from a time in science fiction is on face value a bad idea. It could be done well, but then it would be because what it's doing with the source material now is different and reinvents that concept, which in that point, I'm like, okay, don't go back for that franchising, just make this new thing interesting and great and say you're inspired by, influenced by. It's like we're killing off the directly inspired by quality stuff, and instead it always has to be just a, and we're redoing this. Does that make sense? If we had the same mentality as we do now, when like Fringe was coming out, Fringe wouldn't have been released, which became its own amazing, incredible thing. And instead it would be a remake of X-Files. <laughs> like, does that make any sense whatsoever? I, I really dislike this. I don't know, I, maybe I'm overreaching. No, bringing up Battlestar Galactica is a really good point because Battlestar Galactica is an example of what I'm talking about being done really, really well. Like where, yeah, it's based off Battlestar Galactica, but what Battlestar Galactica, the remake was, was completely different from what the original show airing was. And it's a successful version of that. I'm not speaking in 100% black and white. There is a time to bring back something and do it in a new way that improves. It's just that I more often see it uh, done poorly. Uh, I see it done as a cash grab. And I have more faith in the, what the Battlestar Galactica remake was doing that because of the time it came out in, it was something different. Whereas the X-Files doing this is not something different or interesting. It's just what happens to franchises. This is why like eras of television are talked about, like in eras of art, like it's a real thing. And what we are seeing in this current era we're in of sci-fi franchise rebooting, it doesn't it doesn't happen because it's appropriate or we can do something interesting or that concept wasn't brought to its full potential. So let's rehash it. And instead it's, well, we have a story that's similar enough. So let's just fold it into what people know. All right. The more I have looked into the idea of this X-Files reboot going through a couple of the announcement articles, the more I really do not like this idea. Not only does the whole concept of having a mystery show around real life conspiracies hit very differently in 2023 than it did in 1993. But the fact that this is being brought to us by Disney television 
doesn't give me much faith this is actually going to be boundary pushing or really revolutionary in any way. The X-Files as well benefits from some rose tinted glasses. It's not as solid as some people will leave you to believe. That being said though, Ryan Coogler is a really great director and I believe on his own talent could bring some oomph to an X-Files type show. I'm just wishing it wasn't entirely restrained by the X-Files baggage and could just be a new creation from Coogler. Give me Ryan Coogler's what fringes to X-Files rather than just a reimagining of X-Files. And in the final piece of fantasy news we're gonna be covering here today, Percy Jackson and the Olympians at Disney Plus has had an incredible launch with over 13.3 million viewers turning in for the three episodes episode premiere. And I vocally on this channel have been someone who has said, I'm not really a fan of Percy Jackson. I read the first couple books when I was in early high school, maybe late middle school, but they just were never something that were really impactful to me. But sitting down with Kayla to watch these first three episodes and her having never even read the books, we really enjoyed them. It's still not like my personal story. It's not one that like on face value interests me. And while the writing definitely feels very reflective of some of the clunkier writing from the source material. I think that's part of the why it's succeeding so well. It's kind of shallow, but it's so genuine in its earnest attempt to bring this story to life. And it's not trying to be much beyond what made the original story so successful to its audience. But I think the show is doing a masterful job of just capturing the magic of the source material. And with this series actually being in a reasonable number of entries, I absolutely hope this is seen as a success for Disney Plus so the Percy Jackson fans can get a series of this cast caliber, adapting the books all the way through. Yay! Let's hope Disney listens to the fans. But this has just been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Check out some merch over at danielbgreen.com. And thank you again to the patrons who help me keep this show uh, always running sustainably and comfortably, no matter how much ad revenue uh, varies. I know that we're going into January right now where the ad revenue on YouTube just tanks. So anyone who can spare a dollar just for a month to watch with an ad blocker guilt-free, I'd really appreciate it. And and have a good one, y'all. Peace.